first part of the programme is about new evidence linking to important public health topics. And this is a new bit of research looking at the relationship between childhood socioeconomic position and ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. Um, and because this is new research, the presentation is kind of set up in a traditional um, research type format in terms of background aims, methods and all the rest. But I know a lot of you, if not the majority, are not researchers per se, um, so I'll try and translate this to non-research speak uh, or even English. So in terms of the background, I'll just explain what ACEs are and why the, 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 the topic matters. Uh, and that will be familiar to a whole lot of you, so I'll skip through it very quickly. The aims were about what's been missing from this discussion around ACEs and what we were trying to do to fill that gap. The work was a systematic review of the evidence of the literature, and in my experience, people who are excited by the methods of a systematic review are A, very small number, and B, don't get out very much. So I'm going to skip over the details of that and instead just focus on the results, which is about what does the evidence actually show, and that's important because we're trying to use evidence to ultimately influence policy. And so the conclusions are about what does this evidence mean for policy? Why does all this uh, really matter? So in terms of the background then, you'll all be very aware that there's been loads and loads of research over a long period of time linking different aspects of childhood adversity to an increased risk of all sorts of uh, basically crap outcomes later in life. And um, in recent times, a lot of that evidence has been particularly influenced by a large program of work in America, which was kicked off uh, by a study in 1998 by uh, Feliti et al., uh, who kind of, sort of, but not really, uh, coined the term adverse childhood experiences, ACEs, to capture the, the kind of multiple aspects of this type of adversity. And the definition that they now use for that is now cited as a kind of standard definition, and it comprises um, child, if you can read this, child abuse, in terms of physical, sexual, or emotional, child neglect, uh, physical and emotional, and then a broader set of factors that they refer to, I think a bit unhelpfully, as aspects of household dysfunction. So that involves living in a house where somebody has poor mental health, or where somebody's been put in jail, or where there is domestic abuse, substance abuse, or living through parental separation or divorce. Um, and although it's put forward as a standard definition, definition, actually what came through from this review is that there's no such thing. There's a complete lack of any consistency in terms of how ACEs are measured across different studies. And that's very problematic, and I'll come back to that at the end. But no matter how they're measured, as I said, there's lots of evidence um, associating this type of adversity with a whole range of adverse outcomes. And this includes um, risk of premature mortality, and also risk of a whole set of diseases of which these are only a subset. And it's a graded relationship. So in other words, the, the greater the number of adversities in childhood, then the greater the risk of experiencing these adverse um, outcomes. So because of that, it's become a major focus of policy in lots of different places. Um, people always talk about Wales, which isn't something that often happens in my experience. But there's lots of things been happening in Wales with regard to ACEs in policy and um, practice. Um, ACEs have been um, emphasised at UK government level in terms of lots of parliamentary committees and the like. And of course, uh, here in Scotland, they're very clearly an important priority for the Scottish government. So if, for example, you look at the 2018-19 programme for government, the legislative programme for the Scottish Parliament, uh, ACEs are woven throughout that document uh, under all sorts of different policy topic headings. There's a real emphasis on the need to try and tackle childhood adversity. And on the front cover there, you see wee Nicola looking all chuffed that she's found somebody smaller than herself uh, <laughs> with which to pose for the photograph. And actually, uh, I saw Nicola Sturgeon speak at the screening of this um, American film on ACEs called Resilience. And she spoke very passionately from the heart about what a massively important topic this is, and it is an incredibly important topic, uh, addressing childhood adversity. At the same time, there seems to be a kind of movement in Scotland um, around making the country, uh, quote, the world's first ace-aware nation, and there was a, a conference last September, I think there's maybe another one coming up again, at which literally thousands of people assembled both at the Armadillo um, and also at Hampden Park. Um, and you could pay between £100 for the cheap seats or £150 for the not-so-cheap seats to hear uh, one of the stars of that film speak and a whole range of other presenters. And if you went to that conference or if you went to the screening of that film that I did, uh, you'd be inundated by all sorts of different publicity material for toolkits, uh, training courses, awareness-raising sessions all around ACEs. And I think you can interpret this 
all in one of two ways, either a set of helpful resources with which to help embed ACEs awareness in society, or as an industry cashing in on a um, fashionable phenomenon. I chose my words carefully there. I'm not interpreting, interpreting them in either way, but I'm leaving it up to you. But the real point of putting that up is if you read through all that material, or if you go and watch that film, or you read through a lot of these policy documents, although they focus on ACEs, on adversity, they don't really say very much about the likely influences on ACEs, which is about poverty and broader socioeconomic factors. That's kind of all missing from the discussion. Um, which, on the one hand, maybe that's okay, because ACEs aren't just about poverty. Um, childhood adversity is seen across different social classes, and indeed, that first American study that I mentioned was actually based on a very skewed sample of white middle-class Americans, and it still showed this association with all sorts of outcomes, adverse outcomes. But on the other hand, if you go back to that definition, so-called standard definition of ACEs, all the components of it are very clearly socially patterned. So I'll show you evidence in a second of the social patterning of um, abuse and neglect. And then if you look at things, uh, things under this heading of household dysfunction, well, we know that poor mental health is mass massively socially patterned, higher prevalence rates among the poorer for obvious reasons. The same is true of incarceration rates, of domestic abuse, of substance abuse, be that around alcohol or be that around drugs. And it's also true in relation to uh, separation and divorce rates, all linked to socioeconomic related stresses. So that obviously begs a question then, in all this huge discussion around ACEs and this policy focus on ACEs, what is actually the role of childhood socioeconomic position or poverty in understanding and importantly addressing them? And so from a researcher point of view then the question is, what's the actual evidence? So this was the aim of this bit of work, to review and synthesise the evidence, the research literature, on this relationship between childhood socioeconomic position and ACEs. Um, some of you may know there's different ways of doing that, different ways of reviewing the literature. By far the best way um, is a systematic review, so that's whereby two uh, or more, in this case three reviewers, independently screen all relevant publications on the topic and then extract all relevant data from that. Um, it's the best way of doing it. It's also by far the most painful way of doing it. And as I've said in presenting this previously, this whole project has been as about enjoyable as chewing off your own toes. But anyway, that's a different issue. So we were searching for um, studies which mentioned ACEs or a whole range of synonyms and SEP or a whole range of other similar terms. But the only bit of the methods I really want to draw your attention to is that we were looking specifically for studies which included a childhood measure of SEP for obvious reasons, and where ACEs were the outcome. So in other words, we weren't interested in the many studies where ACEs predict an outcome, but rather we're looking at what predicts ACEs. Uh, we only were, were searching back to 1998, because that's when that um, American study first came out, and we used a particular way of assessing the, the, the quality of studies and the risk of bias, and I'm not gonna bore you with all those details. So, um, in terms of the results, if you've ever uh, sat through the presentation of the results of a systematic review and stayed awake, then A, congratulations, and B, you might know that they're usually presented in this kind of standard way. This is a, a flow chart which summarizes the searches, how many studies were found, included, excluded, and all the rest. And I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but the headline is that if you search for studies which mention ACEs, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of them. If you search for studies which mention ACEs and some kind of measure of socioeconomic position, then you have to, as we did, uh, look at around about 3,000 studies. The important question is how many of those studies actually looked at the relationship between childhood SEP and ACEs, and the answer is six. There's really not very much out there at all, and I won't bore you with the rest of the details. But when we were doing that, it became apparent that there actually was a bigger literature looking at the, the link between poverty and not ACEs, but child maltreatment. Now, obviously, there are important differences between that much more specific issue of maltreatment and that much broader definition of adversity. But again, if we go back to the so-called standard definition of ACEs, maltreatment is a huge component of it because the definition of maltreatment uh, is actually child abuse and neglect. So in this definition, it accounts for five of the 10 ACEs. So it seemed important not to disregard that, but to include it in the searches. 
Uh, so joyfully, we had to do all the searches again, uh, this time looking not just for studies mentioning childhood SEP and ACEs, but childhood SEP and ACEs or maltreatment. And that meant that we um, had to look at about 4,500 papers, again, joy unconfined, uh, of which uh, 35 satisfied the inclusion criteria, which isn't great, but it's better than six. Um, and gave us something to look at. Again, I wouldn't bore you with the rest of the details other than saying that one of the aims of a systematic review is to do some kind of meta-analysis. That's where you pull together all the results of all the studies and try and, and calculate a kind of overall effect size, in this came, case, the overall effect of childhood SEP predicting ACEs. We couldn't do that um, this time basically because of, of what I referred to earlier, the incredible inconsistency in terms of how ACEs are measured. They, they just vary in so many different ways. Um, measures of SEP also vary in 100 different ways too, and the age at which adversity is measured is an important factor, and that uh, changes all the time across different studies too. We've obviously ended up with a relatively small number of papers, uh, and just by the by, about half of those were categorized um, as high quality papers. But despite those two limitations, what emerged from the available evidence is the fact that the association between childhood SEP and these different measures of childhood adversity is very, very clear. So there are meaningful, statistically significant um, associations uh, seen in just about all the studies, including just about all of those deemed to be high quality. And I'll just flash up um, a handful of them now just to give you a flavor of what the, 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 the research has shown. So, for example, I don't know how legible any of this will be, but don't worry, I'll talk you through it. Um, this is a study looking at um, a fairly large Brazilian birth cohort, and they looked at the risk factors for experiencing ACEs and showed that children in the poorest households were about two and a half times more likely to experience four or more ACEs compared to those in the least poor households. And children classed as low SEP in terms of maternal education were about six times more likely to experience four or more ACEs compared to those of higher SEP. <laughs> An American study, and again, don't worry about the legibility, um, it looked at the so-called standard 10 ACEs and how they related to other factors, which included whether or not children were um, born, uh, raised in families where there was frequent family financial problems, and they showed those in that category were associated with, on average, seven of the ten other ACEs, showing, again, the clear association between the two. Um, and cheating just a little bit, because actually this study came out just after we'd run the searches, but because it's based on Scottish data, I've included it. And this is based on the uh, Growing Up in Scotland study, which, as you may know, is a large representative um, longitudinal birth cohort, cohort, and that showed that Scottish children in the poorest households are about 12 times more likely to experience three or more ACEs at age eight compared to those in the least poor households. And in terms of the maltreatment searches, again, just a couple of very quick examples. This was a study from Australia which looked at economic risk factors for um, experiencing maltreatment, and the definition of maltreatment actually included witnessing domestic violence, so it's a broader definition, a bit more like the ACEs definition, and showed a clear association between a whole range of different economic risk factors, including being brought up in poverty. This is a Dutch study, uh, which uh, is a little bit complicated and collected data from different sources, but the headline is that children in low SEP households defined by parental education, were uh, about nine times more likely to experience maltreatment than those in high SEP households, and children in poorer households defined by parental unemployment, about six times more likely to experience maltreatment. And the very last example is from a huge study in Australia, which looked at all children uh, born in Western Australia over a 15-year period, and among non-Aboriginal children showed that those born in the most disadvantaged circumstances were about 14 times more likely to experience maltreatment compared to those born in the least disadvantaged circumstances. And I could go on and on and on, and I frequently do, uh, but basically from the existing evidence, what emerges is a very clear relationship between socioeconomic position in childhood and the risk of experiencing this type of adversity. And this relationship is robust across countries, the many different measures of SEP and of adversity, and at the age at which adversity is measured. But there's a lot more research into maltreatment, and I think importantly that suggests that in these big discussions around uh, ACEs, childhood SEP or poverty is not integrated into the understanding of what causes them. And I think that's an important point, and it's one that's also been echoed by other people, 
in terms of this decontextualised manner in which ACEs are being discussed. And that's true both of policy and also, as I've just shown you, in terms of research. And there was a really nice paper, um, which you won't be able to read, uh, which came out this year from Michelle Kelly Irving and Cyril Delpierre, who looked at the um, quite dramatic increase in the amount of research into ACEs in recent years. These are publications by year. And they attribute this um, increase to a, a whole range of different factors, most of which they criticise uh, pretty heavily, and suggest that such a sudden increase in this topic may have contributed to the decontextualisation of ACEs from the wider socio-economic landscape and to a mismatch regarding links with policy, which is quite a neat summary of basically what our um, study is also showing. Is there also decontextualisation of this type with regard to child maltreatment? Well, not so much. But the importance of poverty is much more clearly expressed in the American literature for some reason, and not so much in the UK literature. And that is reflected also in a really nice review by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation from just a few years ago, who again highlighted the amount of American research into this in comparison to the very limited evidence base in the UK and indeed suggested that in the UK there's a lack of joined up thinking and action about poverty and child abuse and neglect. And child abuse and neglect, as I said, is the definition of maltreatment. So, um, just before I shut up, the main points to note are that this association between childhood SEP or poverty or whatever you want to call it and ACEs is very, very clear, but also very clearly under-researched. The policy focus on helping people who have been affected by childhood adversity is clearly a very, very, very good thing. But at the same time, ignoring the wider socio-economic context to it is a very, very stupid thing. And just to make, uh, kind of hammer home the point, um, you all know that in this wealthy country of ours, currently in excess of one in four children are classed as living in relative poverty. But the Scottish Government's own projections, based on the effects of UK government austerity measures and welfare reform and all the rest, is that in a few years we'll have uh, around about 40% of children in this category. And this figure is actually a bit lower than elsewhere in the UK. But if we don't do something about this, we'll never do anything about child adversity because of the association between the two of them. So policy obviously has to do both to help those currently affected but also to prevent further adversity, it has to address the key socio-economic drivers of it. And I would reckon that most people in this room think that's quite an obvious point, but the issue is that there's a lot of people working in this area uh, to whom it's not an obvious point. And at that point, I'll stop talking. Thanks for your time.